Let's say we have a U-shaped tube with some water inside. I then pour some oil into the right side of the tube. You can probably imagine that as more and more oil is poured into the tube, the water level on this side would go down. The water level on that side would go up. After I stop pouring, the fluids reach a balance. At that time, do you think the surface of the oil would be higher, the same, or lower than the surface of water on the other side? The oil level should be higher because when the fluids reach a balance, reach equilibrium, the fluid would stop flowing and that means uh, if we look at this little bit of fluid over here, the pressure on the two sides must be equal because if they are unequal, the pressure difference would push this uh, little bit of water and make it flow. That means uh, we have not reached the equilibrium. So if the fluids have reached the equilibrium, the pressure on the two sides must be equal. Now, if I go up, this is water on this side, also water on that side. If I compare the pressure over here to the pressure over here, P1 and P2, they must be equal because if the pressure on these two sides are equal and I go up by the same height water column, the pressure will reduce by the same amount of rho GH of this column of water, so pressure P1 and P2 must be the same. On the top over here, the surface is exposed to the atmospheric pressure PO. The surface here is also exposed to the atmospheric pressure PO, which means P1, the pressure over here, is PO plus the rho GH produced by this column of water. So P1 is PO plus the rho GH by the water column on this side. P2 would equal to PO plus the rho GH produced by this oil column, rho GH, but this is the oil column's rho GH. POs are the same, so they can cancel. Once the POs cancel, we can also cancel the G. So the density of water times the height of the water column must equal to the density of the oil times the height of the oil column. That means uh, the oil, since oil can float on top of the water, oil must have a density that is uh, lower. For the lower density, it must have a higher column in order for the rho times h to equal to the rho times h for water. If the oil column is 10 centimeters tall and the surface of the oil is 1.8 centimeters above the surface of the water on that other side, what is the density of the oil in here? After we cancel the PO and the cancel the G, what's left is the density of water times the height of the water column on this side equals to the density of oil times the height of the oil column on the other side. So the density of water is a thousand. The height of the water column would be 10 centimeters minus 1.8 centimeters. So it is 0.1 meter minus 0 0.018 meters equals to the density of the oil times the height of the oil column 0.1 meter. So we'll find the density of the oil to be 820 and that will be kilograms per meter cubed. And that will be the answer. For this particular problem, we actually didn't have to convert the centimeters to meters because on one side we have the rho GH of the water equals to the rho GH of the oil. 
So I can say this is row 1 g times h1 equals to row 2 g times h2. The g's cancel. And since we have density, density on two sides, and the, the height, height, or the depth, depth on the two sides, we just have to make sure that the units are consistent. So if I have kilograms per meter cubed for this density, then I'm going to end up with a kilograms per meter cubed for the unit of density on this side. If I use centimeters for the depth on this side, I just have to make sure I also use centimeters on that side. So I could have used a thousand times the H1, which is 10 minus 1.8 centimeters, and uh, that equals to the density of the oil times the height of the oil column, which is 10 centimeters. I would get exactly the same. The density of the oil is 820 kilograms per meter cubed.